Hello, I'm Gary Lyon and welcome to Access All Areas. The round began under the shadow of the Essendon Asada turmoil, but Damien Barrett, there were some cracking games of footy on the weekend. There were games. That shadow is not going away either, particularly for that club in, involved in that. The Swans uh, put Adelaide game. We'll get to that soon. But the most uh, recent game out of the round, that was the the win, the game of the round, wasn't it? The uh, Melbourne defeat of Essendon. I tell you, as a uh, demon supporter, Damo, this has been a long, long time coming on your side. Melbourne, I'm talking about, wandered down by uh, 33 points during the course of a game. You don't or haven't expected this sort of a comeback, uh, certainly in recent times. A composure, we'll have a look at that actual play in greater detail later with our exclusive behind the ground vision. But this young man here, fairy tale stuff, Damo. 19 seconds on the clock, bang, through it went. Didn't get a lot of touches, did he? But had the most crucial one when it all came down to it. Yeah, well, the substitute, and I think in very good hands when that ball found its way into Christian Sainz's hands. Look at these scenes. Great scenes from the coaching box, great reward for the playing group. Half of which have been through Helen back. Yep. Uh, more than half have been through Helen back. These supporters. A long time since they've been. They've been hanging over the race in recent years, Damo. But it hasn't been the same sort of message they've been conveying to the playing group. But uh, um, I was thrilled. I'm wrapped for these boys. They've been through a hell of a lot of pain in recent times. Some, sh some great resilience. Yeah. What it also showed too, guys. I mean, the three goals they kicked against Collingwood last week. Uh, the, the, the doubters were there. And, and look, yep. we, we all we like right to question it. But they can yeah. then come back from a five goals down. Hey, Essendon, though. What? Look, the spectre of this. This uh, drugs investigation mm. now. It's been there, as, as we know, for 16 months, but it's very real now with these show cause notices. It, it, it is going to impact this season well, in a way they can't make the finals. Yeah, you'd say over time it will. I was interested David Zaharakis bristled when it was put to him that that was the case. And uh, look, I don't think in the short term, I think over time, I don't think you'd put it down to the loss on the weekend to that. I don't think you'd do that at all. I don't think Mark Thompson will be looking for that I, excuse. I do. Not in the short... Oh, oh, yeah, that's your opinion. But in the short term, Damo, they got far enough ahead, mm. they had 69 inside 50s. That's got nothing to do with the Asada investigation. That's got to do with process and decision making. Yep. And well, well, some of that process and some of that decision making just went out the window, didn't it? You, you were in here early having a look at this early, footage and it's, it's, it's down the ground, exclusive it. access. This is the final play. Vision. That is seven Essendon players on four right there, Damo. Look at the corridor. Where are the players behind the footy? One, two, three, four Melbourne players Goal side, no one in front of them essentially. This is the defining play, and then the decision making of the Melbourne players. They didn't lose their head. Mm. They look at the Melbourne Essendon players gravitate to cross. Three of them went to cross, left Christian Salem in the hole. He went back and kicked the goal. That's got nothing to do with Asada. Simple question. How does that happen? Well, that's just panicking. Not panicking. That's just losing and, and stop playing in the moment. And that's what Mark Thompson referred to. You yeah. didn't play in the moment. Someone should have been turning their head, identifying where the dangerous space was, identifying those four Melbourne players in the middle of the ground, and that is what they'll be working on today. If they had Joe Watson, they may have had someone to may control some had. of that. But it wasn't just that last goal, was it? I mean, the, throughout the game, they just wasted opportunities bring the ball forward. Well, 69 inside 50s to 36. Lyndon Dunn was magnificent, was prepared to take front spot, as was Tom McDonald. But I, I would critic, I'd be critical of the ball use going forward, inside forward 50. I mean, you can't look up and look at Paddy Ryder. He's saying, identify where I am in the marking contest. And look, this is, this is holding back in the hole. McDonald was great. Dunn was great. Look at this kick. I mean, you just can't be turning the ball and handing the footy back like that. And that is why you have 69 inside 50s to 36 and you lose the game. So there's a lot to learn for Essendon and have that last world under the Demons. Bulldogs' big win against Great Collingwood story. yesterday. Uh, Marcus Bontempelli, guys, um, was playing well, but the third quarter, he has stamped himself on the back of 30 minutes of footy here. Yeah, 10 possessions in the third quarter when the heat was really on. Look at this, some of the class and the composure. We talk about composure and vision. Look at the vision and hands here. I mean, sometimes you can just watch one passage of play. Yep. That's identifying where the play was and then being smart enough to execute. They've been uh, under enormous pressure, the Western Bulldogs, and rightfully so. They struggled to kick goals. They found goal kickers, and they found a genuine inside midfielder with some body size. He's big. Who's only going to get better, and the combination of he and McRae is going to last. And look, that's, that's the footy smarts. Third mm. man up, getting the ball down the dangerous spot. Look at that. Just wrap it in with one hand, get the ball out. Uh, some light at the end of the tunnel in terms of those. McRae and yep. Bontempelli, emotional scenes after the game. There were. And Michael Klein captured it too on this, uh, this great... Carlo! Photo. That's Carlo Bontempelli. Uh, I love that. That yeah. is a great photo. And look at the m real emotion in, in Marcus's dad there. Yep. Probably been driving him around a junior footy since he was six years of age. Boyd out, Cooney out early. Mm -hmm. uh, Williams late withdrawal. Um, they, they stepped up. Gene Syracuse and Minson really stepped up. Hey, the Pies, though, guys, they, yeah. they, they were shaky. I'm a big fan of Collingwood's, but just the last two weeks, uh, Melbourne... I think at times last week in the Big Queen's birthday, they had them under real heat. And this young defence, Langdon, Frost, Keith, 
for the first time, probably got found out a bit, I think. Yep. And that's full credit to the Western Bulldogs being able to put genuine forward line pressure on. And look, you've got to ask the question of young defenders. Marley Williams makes a bad decision. Third man up, you've got to kill that contest over the line or through the, uh, for a behind. So, yeah, two on one. Genuine contest from Leon Jones. Genuine contest from old Spindle Shanks Grant. Great tackle here from Stevens. It's pretty simple in the end. If you mm. can get that sort of heat and pressure on, you're going to get really good results. There's a couple of times where Collingwood lost and Keith hasn't played well. They're not going to get Reid back um, no. for some time and possibly not for the year. It's, Is that going to be where they fall down? Well, only it's incumbent on the opposition then to make sure that that becomes an issue. And they've handled it OK up until now. So let's watch this space. They play Hawthorne this week. I hate to do this to you, Damo. Boat called Franklin. I don't know. 20, number, where's the number 23, Guernsey? Plays for the Sydney Swans. Goal, goes OK. Jag that one from what? Outside? 70? Well, if that was a 50-metre line, it'd be 70. Well, but of it's, course it's, it's a only 50 about metre 40 metres Oh, you're still so we'll, having we'll a go at him, Damo. We'll give him 60. <laughs> <laughs> no, it could be close to 70. Um, last five goals of the game for the Swans, that man kicked. This is his best one, Gaz. I, this, he yeah. created this out of nowhere. Unbelievable, isn't it? Tibbet not playing, so they needed him to stand up. And Look at that. Uh, th that's just Buddy at his very, very best. It was a great game. Fantastic win for Sydney. Rubber stamps him as flag favourites. Well, they are now, but uh, Port lose nothing. No, they didn't. Even after that goal, they just kept not coming. And, and had the ball in their own, well, a yeah. score happened in the last play yeah. of the day to just fall short. Um, it could easily be the grand final replay. Yeah. Uh, I know there's a lot of footy still to be played, but it was great to see and it lived up to it. Did you think right now that's it? Port oh, no, 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 I'm not into that at the halfway mark of the well, year. Well, it's a fair body of work to make your mind up. It's no. not as if you've just seen five games. No. Well, who is there? Uh, don't write Hawthorne off, they go OK. Yes. Hey, uh, I like this. Sometimes when you get a reputation uh, in this game, it's hard to shake, Damo. Mm. And uh, Angus Monfries has a reputation, or had a reputation for staging. Former teammate, Teddy Richards, have a look at his thoughts on this. Duck your head, Angus. Gives him a real reminder. Now, I'm not sure it was a particularly over-the-top bit of staging, but uh, Teddy has remembered it. Yep. And you win. they're hard-won reputations, and they're hard to lose as well. He's playing well, that might be, isn't he? Playing well. Got a yep. bit on his plate as, as well. Yes, he does. Mm. He does. Um, James Pods, the guess. The uh, Cats made the decision to offload him last year, yep. and, and he took some time to find his feet at Adelaide. Strange enough, he's looked better once Walker's come back. Mm. Well, takes some pressure off. Probably doesn't get the, most, uh, the best defender. Look, the combination of he, Jenkins and Walker looks pretty formidable. I, I, I think, you know, fair enough for Adelaide having a crack at it. I, I wouldn't um, second-guess Geelong's decision to no. cut him loose. Not for a second. And, look, sometimes these can be win-win situations. Yeah. If that's the case, then that's fantastic as well. But well, They did so too on the back of Vardy being expected yep. to play. Now, as we know, he's out for the year. Kirsten has had a, a setback. Kicked six goals in the local league uh, down here on the weekend. And, and, and Kirsten would be in the mix next yeah. week to come in. Yeah, and let's make decisions all. over a body of work too. Not like some people who just jump on the back of one performance and try and change perception as well. Who are you referring to? Uh, just people in general, media types. Um, what about the loss on the weekend to North Melbourne and to the Gold Coast? Yeah. It puts them in a precarious decision in, uh, position when you look at the eight. It does, although the Essendon loss uh, helped those two teams' as causes. Yep. Um, the team looming there, guess to me, is Adelaide. It's not West Coast, even though they're still in the hunt, West Coast. Adelaide just appears to be getting it right. I, I, I rule it West Coast out for what it's worth, and yeah, I think Essendon's yeah. going to struggle as a result. So, to to me, there's three fighting for two. North stay in for mine, um, which leaves the Gold Coast as the vulnerable one. Got a, a tough run over the next three weeks. Got a really good run home. So that'll be interesting to see what happens there. Fremantle will be there when the whips are cracking on the back of work rate, Damo. And yep. uh, this, look at this. This is again our behind the ground vision. Yep. Sometimes when you come out of the fence, you look up and there's nothing. Look at the space on the wing. You're under pressure. You go, I need someone to break for me. So Chris Main says, I'll go. Yep. There's the work rate. He works into space. And then Hayden Valentine, who was up on the half-back flank. He works deep into the forward 50. So that is a work rate of this Fremantle side. Look, it's work rate, but it's also precise disposal, guys. Other clubs could work that hard and not finish it as nice as they could. Yeah, they? well, that's work rate. Hayden Valentine puts Brett Delidio on his backside. Look at that, 1 minute 15 on the clock. They've won the game. He's got five goals. Yep. He pushes deep into the 50. So where is he? Is he going to the goal square, Damo? No, he hits back up. Mm. Hits back up again. There's Brett Delidio getting back to him. So I know you're talking about work rate and precision, but that Fremantle footy side... So comfortable under pressure. Yep. And you wanted to show one more bit about Hayden Ballantyne? No, they're not so good about Hayden Ballantyne, no, although it is great. Fantastic. Though. It's a double Malachi crunch. He, he's the, <laughs> he pushes Shane Edwards over, and the poor old Umpy on the way back. 
cops a bit as well. So. And he's uh, free from any uh, match review panel worries there, I would have thought, too. Right? Hey, it was a big week. Essendon dominated, but footy um, won back some of the spotlight yep. over the weekend, and that's a good thing, and it will need to continue to do that. Thanks once again for joining us on Access All Areas. Have a good week. We'll catch you again next Monday. Goodbye.